If you actually have strong algebra skills, you ought to be able to solve this problem. Now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the full solution in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And I'm going to go ahead and forewarn you that I'm going to be doing a lot of steps here. Now, I'll kind of generally explain as we go through uh, the equation what's going on. But this would turn into a very, very long video if I had to kind of break down every single aspect of this problem. I am going to be using the quadratic uh, formula here. So if you need help with quadratic equations, quadratic formula, anything in this problem, uh, check out my main courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. Best course for the material that we're covering here would be Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. Now, if you happen to be at a higher level of math, like pre-calculus, I teach this stuff in there as well. But what we're talking about here, or what this type of equation, is typically not something that somebody in like a pre-algebra course would cover. So you don't typically study quadratic equations in pre-algebra. But anyways, if you don't understand something, make note of that and get the help, you know, get the help that you need. All right, so with all that being said, let me go ahead and start going through this uh, equation step by step. All right, so the first thing we want to do is uh, use the distributive property uh, over here on the left-hand side, and we want to multiply on the right-hand side. So we have some multiplication we have to do. So we have 5m times m uh, times 1. So that's going to give us 5m squared plus 5m. Again, this is the distributive property. And then we have m minus 2 times m minus 1. Here we can use the FOIL technique, first, outer, inner, last. So first, outer, inner, last. And when I do all that, I'm going to end up with this trinomial right here. So we have uh, 5m squared plus 5m is equal to m squared minus m minus 2m plus 2. Now, of course, right here, I could combine these like terms. So negative 1m plus a negative 2m gives me a negative 3m. And so this is what we have right here. Now, um, when you're doing this work, what you want to do is, let's suppose you take this step right here. You don't want to continue on until you take a quick glance and kind of grade yourself, audit yourself. You're like, wait, did I make any mistakes? You know, double check and triple check. This is how you kind of prevent yourself from making errors as you go through a problem. It's so easy to write something wrong. Uh, you know, that's going to happen. Uh, the key is you need to catch an error before you finish the problem, right? So there's no big deal in uh, making an error as long as you, uh, you know, identify it. And that's why you want to use pencil and not pen because you do a lot of erasing in math. Okay, so at this point we have um, all this, you know, uh, quadratic terms or we have a squared term and a linear term. In other words, we have m squared and m and a number. So we need to be thinking in terms of, all right, this is a quadratic equation because it's the highest, the highest power of this variable is 2. This is a second degree of polynomial. So how do we solve quadratic equations? Well, this is a huge topic in and of itself. And again, it goes beyond the full scope of this video because there's various methods involved. But typically, when you have a linear term, in other words, an m, in other words, if we have an m squared, sometimes you have equations without that uh, middle um, uh, variable. In other words, you might just have 5m squared is equal to 30, and there's no m term, okay, no uh, uh, variable to the first power involved or a linear term. So these type of quadratic equations are quite easy to solve. But when you have this middle term, well, now we need to be thinking in other ways. So the first thing we need to do is to write this equation in standard form. In other words, we're going to set this entire thing equal to zero. And you can say I've done that there. So we're going to have to move all these terms over to the other side. So we'll subtract an m squared from both sides of the equation. We end up with 4m squared. And here we'll add a 3m to both sides of the equation. And we'll end up with a positive 8m. And then here we'll subtract a negative 2 from both sides of the equation. So we'll end up with the negative 2 over here. So now we have this lovely quadratic equation written in standard form. OK, so what do we do next? Well, here we want to look for opportunities to simplify this. And if you notice, we have a 4, we have an 8, and we have a 2. So uh, you might be saying, you know what? 
we could factor out a 2 here as the greatest common factor, and you would be correct. So let's just factor out a 2 here. So 2, um, uh, we could put a 2 parentheses because if we have this 2 and we distribute back in, we're going to have 2m squared plus 4m minus 1, or 2 times all of this, right? So in other words, when we factor out a 2, we're left with this trinomial. Now, why would we do this? Well, it's just going to make the numbers involved here easier. Now, if you notice, I factored out the GCF, and now I'm able to kind of write the equation this way, 2m squared plus 4m minus 1 is equal to 0. So you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what happened to the 2? You just kind of, uh, you know, got rid of it. Well, not really. What I did was divide both sides of the equation by this 2, okay? So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So that's a little a bit of, of a, I don't want to say a trick, but this is something that you definitely want to do. You want to, you know, make the numbers involved here as easy as possible. So when you have, again, your quadratic equation written in standard form, see if you can factor out, uh, you know, the GCF if it's a number value and just simplify the numbers involved. Okay, so now we have 2m squared plus 4m minus 1 is equal to 0. How do we solve this uh, quadratic equation? Well, what you want to do is you want to attempt to factor, okay, uh, this quadratic um, trinomial. Now, uh, some quadratic trinomials can be factored, others cannot. In this particular case, this cannot be factored. So we're like, okay, well, we can't factor this, so what do we need to do? Well, we need to use the quadratic formula. All right, so the, again, this is a whole nother uh, subskill of quadratic equations. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so here is our um, equation. We have 2m squared plus 4m minus 1 is equal to 0. All right, now we already attempted to factor this. Now, I'm not showing you that work, but in other words, you're trying to factor this quadratic trinomial, and you're like, you know what? This thing is not factorable, so therefore I have to use the quadratic formula to solve this. Now, to use the quadratic formula, you need to have this thing written in standard form, which means um, from highest to lowest power, and it's all equal to 0. Now, once this is all in standard form, the coefficients here of these um, uh, terms are our A, B, and C values. Now, if you don't know how to work with the quadratic formula, well, this would be, you know, uh, probably the first time you've seen it in action, but this is the quadratic formula. It's a huge, um, uh, you know, thing that you need to understand, right? I don't know if that's the right uh, word, huge. Uh, well, some of you might be saying, yeah, it is a huge formula. It looks pretty complex. Well, yes, I mean, there is a, a lot to know here, but it's, it's, it's an extremely important formula. you got to know uh, not only the formula, but how to use it and when to use it. All right, now, we're going to use this formula because we can't factor this trinomial, so we have no other choice. So we're going to have to find our A, B, and C values. Now, if you see here, our formula has uh, an A, okay, right there, and there's another A right there. It has Bs, and it has C. So the A, B, and C values here are the A, B, and C variables. We're going to replace with numbers, and those numbers are going to come from this equation. All right, now the number in front of the m squared is our a value. Okay, again, with this, this is written in standard form, highest to lowest uh, power. So this is a is going to be equal to 2. 2 is, is the a value. The number in front of the m is going to be our b value. So b is equal to 4. And then that constant number, this number by itself, is going to be our c value. All right, so a is equal to 2, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to negative 1. So really now what we need to do is plug in all these uh, uh, numbers. We're going to replace these variables with these values, and then we can have one big number crunching operation to do. So let's go ahead and do that uh, right now. 
Now, as I kind of indicated in the beginning of this problem, there's a lot of, uh, of you out there that have the right idea. They'll be like, okay, I'm going to multiply all these terms together. I'm going to try to factor this. And if I can't factor this, I'm going to use a quadratic formula to solve. So, you, you know, it's not like you don't know in general, in a general sense what to do, but it's all the little actual steps that you have to take that really makes the difference in terms of whether you're going to be able to solve this problem. Okay, now here we have our A, B, and C values. And notice uh, uh, that I've plugged in uh, for B, for example, negative B is going to be negative 4 plus or minus B squared, which is 4 squared minus 4AC. You can see all these respective uh, uh, number values plugged in for these variables. Now, what you want to do in practice is before you do anything, you have to double, triple check that, in fact, you plugged in the right numbers. Now, over the decades, I have seen so many students, very good students, um, you know, just make a simple error by plugging in the wrong number value for a variable. It just, you know, can happen, especially if you lose focus, right? So before you do anything, double, triple check, then in fact, you have the right numbers uh, plugged in uh, into the quadratic equation. And once you're confident, you're like, okay, now I'm going to focus on simplifying this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that right now then. So here we have negative 4, which of course is going to be negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared, which is what? 4 squared is 16. Now this part right here uh, tends to confuse this part of the quadratic formula. Actually, this whole thing right in here is called the discriminant. But a lot of errors are made right here because of this minus sign. Okay. So the best way to manage this is to take this minus sign and turn it into a plus negative. All right. It's just a great little technique. So you could be, you know, kind of fully aware that this is a negative number. Now, just it's just a little trick that tends to help a lot of students that make mistakes with the quadratic formula, and a lot of people do. All right, so this is a negative 4. So we're going to add a negative 4 times 2 times negative 1. So we have a negative times a positive, which is negative, times a negative. So this is all going to be what? Positive, right? So negative times a positive is negative. Negative times negative is positive. So all this is going to be positive 8. All right, 4 times 2 times 1. So we have 16 plus 8. So we have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 8 all over 2 times 2, which, of course, is 4. All right, so now let's go and continue on. And of course, 16 plus 8 is uh, 24. So we have negative 4 pl uh, plus or minus the square root of 24 over 4. Now, if some of you got this answer, I would say that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, I would say, yes, I would maybe give you a B plus for your work, but this is not fully simplified. In other words, uh, there's a lot we can do here, namely, with this square root and factor out of GCF to kind of clean this all up. So uh, the skills involved here are skills that hopefully you learned in algebra. So the work is not done yet. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So what we want to recognize is that we want to simplify um, any perfect square factors in this 24. So we're taking the square root of 24. So the square root of 24 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 6. And 4 is a perfect square factor. Again, I'm talking about multiple different skills that you need to learn in algebra. So anything that you don't understand, uh, you know, you want to review. Uh, what we're talking about here is simplifying radical expressions, right? So that's what you would want to look up if you're like, I don't understand what you're doing with the square root of 24. Okay, so we have the square root of 24. That's equal to the square root of 4 times 6. So why is that important? Well... Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our answer this way, or take a look at the work this way. We have negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 24, which is the same thing as uh, the square root of 4 times 6. Now, here, I can uh, break up these square roots into two separate square roots. That's a property of square roots. So the square root of 4 times 6 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And the square root of 4 is what? 2. So this is all equal to 2 square root of 6. So this is where we're at right now. Now, some of you may even have this answer, and that's uh, pretty good. Matter of fact, I might have given you like an A minus for this work, but we're not done yet because notice we have these fours and twos here. So we can factor out a GCF, which is two. All right, so let's factor out a two out of all of this. So when we do that, we have two times negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. And uh, the way you know that you factored out the GCF right is you just kind of multiply back in and see if you get the right 
uh, you know, uh, product, right? So two times negative two is negative four. And then two times this plus or minus square root of six is two square root of six all over four. And four, of course, you can think of as two times two, because what we want to do here is uh, look at this two and think of, hey, is there another two in terms of a factor down in the denominator? Of course, we're dealing with the four, which is the same thing as two times two. So now we could just factor out this two uh, with the, one of the twos in the four, and we're left with the following, negative two plus or minus the square root of six over two. So this is the full answer. And actually, got to make sure you, you uh, know how to interpret this uh, solution. So one of the um, unique solutions in this quadratic equation is negative 2 plus the square root of 6 over 2. And the other so, uh, solution, because remember, quadratic equations have two solutions, is negative 2 minus the square root of 6 over 2. So this is plus, this is minus. So instead of writing the same thing, uh, which is the, the only difference of plus or minus, we use this lovely notation right here. Okay, so a lot of people will have the general idea in terms of what to do. They'll be like, all right, I'm going to multiply these together. Then if I have a quadratic equation, I'm going to try to solve it using this technique, using the, uh, that technique. But here's the deal. If you can't manage all the work, you're not going to be able to solve these equations. That's why it's absolutely uh, critical that you just show your work step by step by step. And you can see a problem like this actually took quite a few uh, steps. You have to have the patience and the focus to you know, just concentrate on doing this work, right? Especially at this level of math. And again, if you need help with any of the sub skills here, check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 uh, courses. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in all your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.